yes, okay, I think we're all good. Uh, so first of all, that was a musical interlude by two amazing musicians, uh, Philip Wu and Esther Moore, to give us a little bit of contemplation. And I mean, what you guys didn't see is, is we're on the 10th floor and it was just dusk, so the sun was setting over Mount Fuji and we got that, that final sun ray in after a massive thunderstorm we had here. So. I mean, very auspicious in, in many ways. So I wish I could share that feeling with, with anybody, but I think we captured some of that moment. So I would like to go on to our, uh, to our, to our next uh, discussion. And this morning, we, we started the morning with, with Ray Ozzy uh, showing uh, the air note sensor, which is something that we have been working for many, for many years too. And we basically, you know, SafeCost was kind of a starting point of of, of IoT-driven citizen science and doing things at scale. And we started with radiation, but we have been working on air quality and the environment in general for the last co couple of years, but we're now very excited to, uh, to be able to show uh, everybody uh, the, the air note. It's, it's a $150 sensor, but it, it's, it, the low cost doesn't really translate to the capability. It's well, uh, uh, it, will, it will run for years uh, on a solar panel, it is powered by uh, mobile technology that is prepaid and you don't have to do that. So really entering a new stage in terms of citizen science, but it also opens up new connections to other things that are happening. And I want to talk about green tech specifically. And some, some people may know a little bit about green tech, but and we, I'm going to talk to one of the inventors of the, of the, of the, of the terms. And we, you know, in my professional life, I spent my whole career on, on, on FinTech. And actually, I'm going to take off my mask because I'm very social distance at this point in time, right, guys? And <laughs> so I'm watching everybody in the mask, but uh, I think it will be clearer to hear me this way and, and, uh, and such. So, so green, green tech for, for me is, is kind of a, the next level of financial technology meeting social impact. And, and it's a very exciting area. And over the last few years, we have seen the rise of ESG impacts, et cetera. But with also that, we're seeing a lot of challenges that are there. And uh, we want to talk about it a little bit today. So I'm very honored to have three uh, experts in the field with me today. Sobnendo Mohanty, uh, who is the Chief Fintech Officer of the Monitor Authority in Singapore. And uh, last uh, December at the Singapore Fintech Festival, he and his uh, and his boss, the governor of, of MIS, uh, Mr. Ravi Menon, talked about a new program called Greenprint. And we want to talk about that. Uh, today we have Finset Tabo. He is uh, he is with Monex Group, and Monex Group is a, a one of the largest uh, 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 securities companies here in Japan. But they have they're the first ones in Japan to launch an ESG fund uh, for uh, consumers to buy. And we're going to talk about that, how that connects. And then Jun Yamada, Jun Yamada is. Uh, the ex, ex CEO of Qualcomm in Japan, but more more recently, uh, after the, the the disaster ten years ago, I, when I met him, he is actually from Fukushima, and he started to uh, a business around solar power generation in Fukushima, and that very much ties into the discussion today. So we're connect we're going to connect all these dots between between these uh, these these parts, and and what I would like to do maybe if each of you could spend a few minutes with us to talk about. Uh, you know, what specifically you're working on, a little bit about yourself, but specifically what you're working on, and then I would like to go into uh, into a discussion around that. So and maybe I would like to start with with kind of the, 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 the with Jun Yamada here, and, uh, and Jun, uh, please share with us what, what, uh, what are you up to? Okay, hi, everybody. This is Jun Yamada. It's uh, nice to meet you folks so on Electronically. Yeah, as uh, so, uh, Peter has introduced me, uh, I have been working on this uh, solar panel, uh, so solar, solar power generation and renewable energy generation activities in the last uh, eight years in Fukushima. And during the course of that uh, endeavor, uh, I have come across with a couple of us uh, issues that I would like to share with you today. So, uh, so let me start with, uh, with my simple couple of uh, slides to explain what I am doing over here. So I think uh, so you can see this slide. This is uh, uh, the slide that illustrates uh, the, the location of each uh, power plant in Fukushima that, I, that my company, Aizu Electrics, is working on. 
the team that I belong to uh, uh, are consisted of us the local people who were very much astonished by this nuclear power plant explosion. And uh, also we were uh, somewhat ashamed that we have not thought almost at all about uh, uh, the power generation. And we simply believe that the power is to come uh, whenever we turn on the switch. Uh, but it was not that simple uh, because uh, so, uh, so, so we have uh, started to, to work on our own to generate electricity. And, uh, and it's a solar power, uh, solar panel and solar, solar power. It's the a, it's a most uh, uh, easy way for us to, to undertake. So we have begun to use the solar as a, as a way to, to produce electricity. And during the course of us uh, five years uh, in the past, we have uh, established about 90 locations of the uh, solar power. Uh, power plant and one location for the some uh, micro hydro and we are adding more micro hydro power plants nowadays but as you may understand that uh, the Aizu region is a very heavy snowy uh, place so uh, so in, in the winter time we have snow like this so uh, so our first uh, challenge is how to to uh, let's say work around this uh, snow uh, so uh, so so the uh, solar panel can be as much as possible uh, exposed to to the sunlight even in the winter time so we, we did some uh, tricks to to, uh, to to take to take care of the situation and the uh, solar panel is uh, is you know, it's vertically around 30 40 degrees uh, against uh, uh, the horizontal, so that uh, so when the snow comes in, uh, it it it, uh, it it is covered by snow. But uh, as soon as the, the snow uh, stops falling and the uh, sunlight shows up, uh, the snow would automatically uh, it drops out, uh, drops off. So that's how we have us uh, uh, installing the uh, solar panel in this kind of a uh, mountainous, so, uh, snowy uh, region. And most of the solar power plant we, we installed are, are very small. Uh, most of them are less than 50 kilowatts uh, power, uh, power plant. And as, uh, as you see, uh, there is a sub pipe, which is uh, uh, the installation is, is, uh, is almost two, more than two meters high uh, from the ground so that the snow can, can fall on to the ground. Uh, and so this is a micro hydro we have begun to work on. Uh, it is a, also a, a fairly small one. Uh, this uh, the first one is less than 40 kilowatts. And so we take advantage of this uh, uh, water flow for the agriculture. Uh, and that we take us uh, uh, the water from, from the, uh, from the uh, Water, water channel, and then just uh, make us a bypass as a pipe to to take uh, uh, take a water, and then put it into uh, this uh, turbine. So uh, so we are working on those kind of uh, renewable energy nowadays. And uh, uh, what we I think we 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 have two two issues in uh, currently. So one thing is uh, it's a prediction of the of the uh, natural power. Uh, what I mean is that this, uh, 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 in order for the electricity we generate to be used, uh, to be valuable, we would have to be able to predict how much electricity, how much energy we can generate tomorrow or, or sometimes, uh, uh, sometime later so that we can sell our electricity to the market uh, and then uh, uh, and, and the market value can be can be far more or let's say a higher if we can predict how much of us energy is able to uh, to be provided so uh, uh, we do all kinds of monitoring to 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 monitor how much of a sunlight comes in and how much of electricity is generated 
So the monitoring is okay, but the, the prediction uh, is, uh, is a different story. And so, uh, that, that's where I would like to, 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 to be, uh, let's say, supported by, by your, let's say, intelligence and, uh, and, and the insight, how to, how to, uh, how to do that. Yes. And, yeah. So that, that's, that's where we are, and maybe we can talk on to the other. Yeah. That's, yes. We we, we can talk about that point a little bit later, and it's a very valid point. Yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, move to Subdendo in Singapore, and uh, Subdendo, uh, please share with us what you know. Um, what what is a financial regulator doing with things like power generation and and things? How does it all connect? Yeah. So I'm going to share with you a slide. Uh, uh, if you okay, let me see. Okay, uh, is it? Yes, we can see it. Oh, good. Okay, so just give me a second. Sorry, I got a wrong one. Sorry. I can see Project Greenprint. Okay, I can good. see three columns. Okay. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so um, anyway, just uh, let me re reintroduce myself. I'm the Chief FinTech Officer with the uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, we are a primarily a regulator, and as all of you know, uh, Singapore is a global financial center. It is a hub, and part of the hub, uh, we do focus on financial sector development. And within that financial sector development, uh, with my role is to promote technology-backed financial services and use technology as a way to create innovation and hopefully in that long process or the shorter process using our technology, we can reduce the cost of finance, create different affordable business model, in, uh, improve financial inclusion and create a much more equitable society. But as we know that uh, the financial sector is also responding to an existential crisis called climate change. And all of you know, there are many data which is globally available that almost 80% of all of our wealth collectively, even four of us in this call, uh, uh, all our wealth uh, is subject to a climate risk because most likely somewhere downstream, our investments are lying in a coastline, which is subject to many climate risks, which can just go away in one fine day. So as a financial sector regulator, we have a responsibility to respond to such risk. And this risk is real. Climate has a real impact on the investments and assets and the financial stability of any country. So we cannot ignore it anymore. So as a response to that, uh, uh, Singapore has started focusing on creating a green finance capability and capacity. As a part of the capacity, uh, I have a responsibility to build what technology can do better. As we know, one of the known barriers to green financing, I know there are many financing nowadays under the green level, which I think we can all question because sometimes this green financing can have all kinds of data which may not be always accurate in many sense, what they call as greenwashing. So there are six big uh, barrier to green financing. One is the most simplest part of the component is data. How do you have access to data which proves that this financing of asset and this asset are actually truly creating the, the green KPIs they're supposed to uh, adhere to. Second is trust. How to ensure that this data is, can be trusted and it very much uh, works towards Safecast's own principle of trust and data, which that's the reason why I think this my, my presence here is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, some synergy in this discussion. Third, and Peter and me talked about many occasions that we need an efficient ledger. How to account this without creating complicated wall garden ledger system where we create this data and, and account for this data and we, do, we don't know who has done it and how to manage it, a decentralized ledger. Fourth, we need to also think about business models, how to use this data and the data which is currently available, create new business model, new, new way of financing business uh, assets and projects so that it is economically viable. As all of you know, one of the biggest pushback to green finance is the, that it can cost, uh, the cost of the financing can go up because projects to, for, for asset to convert to green, from brown to green, it needs a lot of take investment. Sometimes the take are not are really cheap. And of course, it, the, the fifth one is the green technology themselves. And actually I was, I was looking at a report from a very well-known consulting firm and they were quite proud in displaying that how much of green technology has come. 
and I went and did my little research, uh, Peter, to see how much these companies have raised. After six years, the companies raised only two million dollars, which which shows that 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 this green technology are not attracting investors' uh, interest. So they are lacking capital to fund this green technology. And the last is policies, which is how do we shape policies so that we collectively move to the right direction. Uh, as a response to that, Project Green Print create, is, is in the process of building a platform. We have three objectives. How do we mobilize the investment? How do you monitor the indicators once we decide to finance a particular asset? And how do you measure the impact of such a shift? Uh, of course, there are many examples I have laid out in my slide. On the, on the side of the investment, we talk about marketplace. As I was saying, that we need a marketplace where people who are focused on this green finance or green activities should find themselves in front of the investors or the banks so that they can access credit or investment to grow. How do we create uh, opportunity for a green bond which can go to fund green asset and, and you know bonds are expensive and quite large ticket. Can it be fractionalized? So that's a way to, we can create more pa retail investors participating in green bonds. How to develop a more efficient supply chain system so that it can create more transparency and in, attract more investment. So the whole set of mobilizing investment focus area using technology, data, and just simple marketplace can, can solve it. The second piece on the monitor, on the indicator side, we have a whole set of thinking going around. Can we take this data uh, and create certification, trusted benchmarking, find IoT device. In fact, this IoT and LEO satellite technology is something right into safe cost uh, right. devices, which Peter was proudly dis uh, displaying. Can we use some of these devices to improve provenance and, and, and traceability of this data? Uh, similarly, on the, on the third column, uh, how do we think about measuring impact? There's a whole set of challenges going around how to com compute carbon data, carbon, uh, carbon uh, points, how to offset this, this to credits, uh, how do you create impact scores? So we all have get motivated to start shifting our personal wealth to green assets. Now, all this requires a massive in, in a massive infrastructure called a green data platform. I use deliberately word hybrid because we all know that this green, the green space is a is a multi multi stakeholder activity. No single country can hold data. So we got to think about a, as a platform. There are some data which will sit at the end point where data are getting created. There will be some data which will be decentralized because the countries may not be comfortable to share the data. And there will be some space for centralized repository where we can collect the data, create insights, create certification, create uh, 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 create the necessary carbon credits which will require to offset such uh, other uh, uh, carbon em emission. And how do you build that data set? Is there, is there a possibility to create a hybrid data platform which allows all this to operate? And, and to support all this thing, Project Greenprint has created different uh, channels. We have created a grant close to $250 million, $250 million and almost $50 million committed to as a grant, support POCs and pilots. We are in the process of working with multiple central banks and tech companies to build consortium program. In fact, we are talking to Safecast through Peter. Can they be part of a consortium program where we can finance an uh, a, a asset in some emerging market where these devices can be used to capture uh, environmental data and, and perhaps use that data in a way to create certification? cross-border engagement because policies have to be sorted out. Countries have to figure a way to share such data. These data are very sensitive data because it's got economic implication, political implications for many country. And the, and the end point is how do we come together as, uh, as a platform because ultimately there'll be many platforms and how do you connect all this to create truly a connected and an equitable and, 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 and environmentally, environmentally responsible uh, uh, financial sector. I think that's where we are heading with Project Green Print. It is an yes. early stage of formation. Hopefully, we'll get to the journey as we have done with other programs. Yes, it's something new. That it, it's it's super impressive. I think from, you know, if you look around the world and 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 if you look at what regulators are doing, this is very advanced thinking and also uh, trying to you know trying to experiment with these concepts. I would like to go over to Vincent, who is actually experimenting, actually, as we speak, in, in a way. And uh, Vincent, it will be great if you introduce yourself a little bit further, but we really want to learn what is, you know, what, what, what are you doing uh, at the program at Monex and how does that tie 
in a way to what Subnendu is talking about and also what June is talking about and how, how are you, you know, from a, you know, from a financial services perspective, how are some of these things starting to come together and, and how do you see the future around uh, things like what Subnendu uh, was talking about? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, um, Peter, I think, I mean, being in Japan for 30 years, I think 10 years ago is what happened. We all realized uh, that nature is a capital, is an asset that now we have to really protect. And um, we have a climate emergency and if you want to avoid uh, 1 billion climate migrants within 30 years or more within, for the century, we really have to, to act. So um, we, what we are launching now with, uh, with Monex is a climate positive impact uh, fund uh, where we're going to invest into real assets that are, have a real impact on the, on the climate, on the environment that we can monitor. We can extract data that the investor can access in a very transparent way. And uh, I think today it's just a great opportunity to be all together because we, we it's just, I feel it's just time to um, coordinate our efforts and go global. We have the technology now to be able to connect the sensors to the IoT platform. We can tamper proof the data with all the technology, with blockchain, whatever, AI and so on. We have the regulator in some countries going after a cracking down on the greenwashing and that will help the financial world and the money to be put at work in a where, where we have a real impact on the, on the environment. So we just have a, a, a great opportunity to do something. So June, Sopnandu, what you are doing is great. We should just accelerate, I feel. Um, the program in, in, uh, for the FinTech and the green tech in uh, Singapore is fantastic. We are out of Tokyo, even with Monex, we are working with some proofs of, of concept right now in, in Singapore with a rec tech and with a financial institution. So it, it's time to go global. Um, when you look at the... Um, I'm going to try to share one, one screen with you. Um, can you. Can you see it? Can you see my screen? You have... Um, Peter? No, I don't see you. No, you don't? Okay, just just a moment. Um, all right, we well, have it now. Okay, so uh, ju just to make it very simple, and I swear I didn't see uh, Sopnandu's uh, 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 slide before. Uh, it's almost the same. Uh, and I just discovered this green print uh, project a few, I would say weeks ago when, I, when, when we met with Peter, I said, well, that's exactly what we tried to do. So we have to speak maybe. Um, so what we, are, what we are doing is wherever we invest in terms of uh, biomass, solar panel, name it, um, uh, hydrogen project or whatever, we connect through the sensors, um, the data, the energy produced, the uh, whatever CO2 coefficients, name it, through the, uh, an IoT platform from where we uh, aim to really launch a total uh, financial fintech um, environment that will help with the help of the, uh, I think the third party auditor, potentially the regulator, rating agency and all kinds of external advisors to launch a new type of ESG products where the client will know that his money is put at work in a real you know, with a real impact on the, on the environment. And the technology helps nowadays. If you invest on, the, on a private basis on, in a solar panel uh, uh, plant, you can follow uh, your energy production on your, on your mobile phone on a, on a daily basis. So it's time to accelerate now and help the, uh, the financial institutions to on their stewardship to really uh, go global and launch new type of uh, more digital ESG products, but with a real impact. And uh, for that, I think the quality of the integrity of data is very important. So what SafeCast has been doing, I think is important and we have to integrate it. And basically uh, maybe Peter, I think I need one of those sensors on all the plants that we will invest in. And we have to work together to potentially have some measurements that you can- uh, Yes. And 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 just just to hook on to that, and uh, I have to be mindful of the time. We have about five minutes left, but but one one thing I wanted to to share in that is is that and June asked, you know, June also said, you know, how 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 can we get help and how can we connect things? I I strongly believe as I when I started Safecast with other 
uh, other people together 10 years ago, I strongly believed in the power of open data, but also in the power of of citizens' participation yeah. in understanding what happens in our environment. Now, I'm not going to belabor the point. Ten years later, we have gone and seen fake news. We have now COVID. We're seeing the power of information, but also the, the importance, more increasing importance of making data available. Also from a scientific viewpoint, and I think, June, what really is important is what, what we're in Saving Us trying to do. We're trying to, we, we may do f certain things, but we're trying to inspire scientists and, and other organizations to be much more transparent and open with the data so that others can, for example, take your data and figure out how to predict these things, right? So by keeping all the data to ourselves, we're also doing ourselves a disservice. So we want to evangelize um, uh, the, the use of open data to to basically uh, pros prosper from, from that. And I, I also think that if we if we look at the financial world, you know, you, you mentioned the word greenwashing. Uh, there, there's a lot of initiatives that have been, you know, have, are positioned as green or whatever, but we have seen a lot of these are not really delivering the impact on our environment and, and having citizens participate in that creates a different dynamic, which I think is increasingly important. At the end of the day, there are no citizens, there's no government, there are humans that work together to make this a better place. So, so I would like to, we have, because we have five minutes left, I would like to uh, focus on you as to, as to how do you see the, the importance of, of, of transparency and trust building in your world? And, and what do you think is kind of the, the, the you know, the, the thing that you, you feel most uh, excited about when you look at projects like, like Safecast, not only Safecast, there are a lot of other organizations that do similar things, but how do you see that come together? And, uh, you know, we started with June, maybe, June, if you could share from your view, how, how, can, how can we bring some of the thoughts of that Safecast is bringing to your world and, and how, how do you think that can drive more, uh, more connectivity between citizens, science, bis you know, business and government? Yeah, uh, my comment is that uh, the, the data that SafeCast uh, will connect or have connected uh, should be utilized more for by 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 the, the let's say intelligent people like us engineers or the say AI or artificial intelligence let's say analytics and analytics so that uh, uh, what that data would mean. Or it would it is uh, is more important. Uh, so uh, uh, I I talked a little bit about the uh, the prediction of the of the uh, yes. So uh, so so the so the data collected should be interpreted. Should be let's say presented in, to to explain what those data can indicate. And I think it's a, that that's an area where I need more people to come in to the right. the safecast uh, arena. Okay. To, to work on that. I That's think. great. Can, can I move on to SOPS? So then do what, how do you see this fusion of, 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 of various parts of society coming together? So I'll give a very quick data point so that I, I amplify my point. When we look at green data, the financial sector with its own data set can only answer 10% of the issue, only 10%. If, if you get the best data system, only 10% can be explained. Remaining 90% are going to come from non-financial sector data set. And out of that, 60% are going to come from two, health, uh, the, uh, the food sector and travel sector. Rest is utility and uh, other, uh, what I call as the other uh, activities. And within that 80% data set, we got to depend on somebody third party which can give us data. The way I see SafeCast in two buckets, actually one bucket, there are, there's a lagging indicator, there's a leading indi indicator. We can deal with the lagging indicators or the leading, uh, the leading indicators by, by tapping into platform data. But we need some safe cast like technology to give us the lagging indicator that whatever we did, whatever we promised, is it really impacting the society? And that's where safe cast with its technology can be a perfect fit. And I, I think that's where I see the biggest synergy. Okay, that, that, that's great, Soreni. I really appreciate that. So, so thanks. Thank you for that. Vincent. Well, uh, very your quickly, views. Um, I'm very first optimistic on the technology, on the progress we can make together. And yes, uh, we need a counter power in terms of data, integrity of data and everything. And we need also uh, to go global. We also need a regulator to monitor everything. So I want to believe that SafeCast, we're going to help us to 
develop more, div more uh, I would say, uh, technological type of sensors. We can monitor the soil, we can monitor the sea, the right. air, everything. So we have a lot to do together. That's great. And, and I would like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, today we started this morning at, at nine o'clock here in japan time uh, we still are going on till another six hours uh please join and stay on the show uh we're going to play music will stay on <laughs> yes actually i'm going to run up now to to uh, announce the next act so still stay stay tuned and and we're ready to go okay so uh thank you so much again for joining us and uh i think we're going to uh close here and we're going to switch to the next segment thank you again thank you congratulations okay thank you bye bye for now bye.